Good evening. My name is Professor 219. I teach an online class on how to survive in today's messed up America as a conservative. You do not need to know my real name. Tonight, we're going to discuss the absolute disgrace that federal law enforcement has become. Many of you are already aware of the disaster that has been the investigation into so-called Russia collusion it resulted in a finding of no less than 17 instances of misconduct in the FBI and the umbrella organization, the Department of Justice, by a, an inspector general who was appointed by Barack Obama. His name is Michael Horowitz. Okay, this is not some kind of Trump lackey. This is a Democrat. <clears throat> a lot of the more high-profile offenders in the FBI and the DOJ, no less than six, were either fired, forced to resign, or forced into early retirement. Pete Sturzak and Lisa Page were coordinating their leaks to the press via text message. One of the FBI attorneys named Kevin Kleinsmith tweeted the day after the 2016 election, Viva la Resistance. Kleinsmith has pled guilty to a felony for altering official documents. That's just the tip of the iceberg, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, based on hundreds of reports that I've seen, it appears to be routine for many FBI and Drug Enforcement Administration agents to routinely lie on their search warrant and wiretap warrant applications. Each one of these lies should be the end of a career, a felony conviction for perjury, and a prison sentence of up to five years. But all too frequently, in fact, almost universally, they get away with it scot-free. It's appalling. Now, the DEA is not a partisan Democratic Bureau. Okay, like the FBI has become. But they lie on their search warrant and wiretap warrant applications even more frequently. Now, let me ask you something. If you make a series of 15 mistakes in a row, are you A, going to get closer to your goal, or B, get farther away? And here's another question. Are you going to get fired or are you going to get promoted? Well, in the FBI and especially the DEA, if you don't get caught, you're going to get promoted. And all of these mistakes move you closer to your goal. Therefore, they are not really mistakes. Look, in the real world, when you make a mistake, you probably are not getting closer to your goal. You probably are getting farther away from your goal. About 60 or 70 percent chance of that. And then there's another 20 or 30 percent chance that you're moving off in some, you know, tangent. Okay, not getting closer to your goal, not getting farther away, but getting distracted. But in all these search warrant and wiretap warrant applications, each and every alleged mistake gets them closer and closer to a finding of probable cause. Whenever an informant's uh, information contains names that aren't spelled right or addresses that are the wrong addresses, phone numbers that are off by a couple of digits, okay? The 
agent in charge assigned to getting the search warrant fudges the evidence a little bit. He changes those phone numbers and the spelling of those names and those addresses so that they all match up and make a perfectly assembled little puzzle for the magistrate or the judge to look at and say, okay, probable cause, here's your search warrant, here's your wiretap warrant. In criminal court, the so-called mistakes are excused as good faith mistakes under a case called Alabama versus White, a Supreme Court case. In civil court, if you try to sue these officers, well, the, the civil court equivalent of the good faith mistake is qualified immunity. Okay. I have never seen a better argument in favor of removing qualified immunity for police officers trying to obtain search warrants. Now, I'm not talking about removing qualified immunity for officers who uh, are accused of using excessive force or accused of uh, murdering someone. Okay? But if they're just lying on a search warrant application and they lied over and over and over again, take their qualified immunity away and let the defendant sue them until the sun burns out. Just a, a few cases that I want to review with you. First, of course, is the Russia collusion hoax. Okay? That originated in Hillary Clinton's campaign headquarters. John Podesta was peddling this fake uh, steel dossier to the FBI and the Department of Justice. He was sending several different uh, operatives from the Hillary campaign to friendly FBI agents and DOJ executives. This happened numerous times, at least six times. Okay. And the Democratic partisans, such as Pete Sturzak and Lisa Page and Kevin Kleinsmith and Andrew McCabe and Sally Yates, were all gung ho about proceeding with this investigation, despite the fact that it was an obvious partisan hit job that had no basis in fact. Meanwhile, at practically the same time, in Indianapolis and Los Angeles, there were credible allegations from 40 different young women that a team doctor assigned to the U.S. gymnastics team named Larry Nasser, N-A-S-S-A-R, was sexually abusing and sexually assaulting them. Forty different young gymnasts accused him. And the FBI also became aware of alleged sexual conduct by Dr. Nasser that had nothing to do with the gymnastics team. So there was additional evidence against this guy. And the senior agent in charge in Indianapolis by the name of Jay Abbott, uh, who was getting close to retirement, about 55, he was actually trying to get a job lined up with the US gymnastics team for after his retirement. He wasn't investigating this. Okay? He kind of put it on the back burner. He didn't consider these allegations serious enough. And he considered the head of the US gymnastics organization uh, kind of a snake oil salesman. Well, all you have to do is interview the individual victims and you know that it's time to arrest the guy and get a search warrant. And when they finally did get a search warrant, they found a huge cache of child pornography on his personal computer. Now Dr. Nasser is going to prison for about a hundred years. And Jay Abbott scurried off into retirement before he could be fired which is what he deserved. 
But take a look here, okay? They investigate an obvious partisan hit job. They follow through with the investigation hard and fast with massive resources. And they slow walk a legitimate investigation into sexual abuse of young ladies. I can keep going here. I can keep going half the night. Okay? The alleged kidnapping plot against Governor Christy Whitmer in uh, Michigan. Okay? There were 18 alleged co-conspirators. 12 of them were either FBI informants or undercover FBI agents. This gives rise to a Facebook meme uh, showing a couple of uh, wolves taking off their sheep masks and saying, is anybody here actually a wolf? Excuse me. Is anybody here actually a sheep? Entrapment law is written very, very narrowly, and the FBI is well aware of this. So they get away with murder. Entrapment, entrapment, entrapment. It follows logically that since the FBI was well aware of at least two of the three organizations involved in the January 6th riot at the Capitol uh, were planning violence, they also infiltrated those organizations and had either undercover agents or informants or both in both of the organizations that they were aware of, possibly all three. I think uh, an investigation into the FBI's role in January 6th is more than appropriate. There's a freelance journalist by the name of Glenn Greenwald. Maybe you've heard of him. I rarely agree with him. However, I do find that he's very intelligent and he sources his work impeccably. And he's done some excellent investigative journalism into this particular topic. Just Google the words Glenn Greenwald FBI and you'll immediately see what I mean. On this topic, Glenn Greenwald and I are in complete agreement. He's left wing, he's gay, he was stridently anti-war against the Iraq war. If you want to get into the Iraq war, that's a subject for another evening. But uh, on this particular topic, Glenn Greenwald is batting a thousand. Read his stuff. It's excellent. Now, what do we do? I think the FBI should be disbanded. I think they need to start from scratch with an entirely new agency. Same thing with the DEA. It's ridiculous. They are a national disgrace. Regarding uh, traditional cops wearing blue uniforms and badges. Uh, yeah, at a small town level, about 100% of them are wonderful guys. They're totally honest, they would lay down their lives for you. You get to uh, the suburbs or a small city like Omaha or uh, Boise, Idaho, and it drops to about 90%. You get into the, or maybe 80%. You get into a big city like Chicago or LA or New York, Detroit, it drops to somewhere like 70 or 60%. But let's not forget those guys, okay? Even in the worst police departments, the most corrupt police departments in America, at least 60% of them are still good cops. The other 40%? A mixture of people who lie on search warrant applications and people who are racists and people who use excessive force and people who take bribes. A lot of them would do all four. But 
they would still run towards gunfire when everybody else was running away. They would still run into a burning building when everybody else was running out, just to make sure that everybody got out. These guys are still brave cops. They have profound character flaws. And they need to be removed from the force. We all have character flaws. Some character flaws are much, much bigger than others. That's about all I have for this evening. If you like what you heard, give me a thumbs up below on YouTube. Uh, leave a comment or two if you choose. Share this video far and wide on all your uh, social media. Facebook, BitChute, uh, Rumble, you name it. Have a good evening.